Haha, ha, I made it right on time. <laughs> Good. Hi, Hannah. Hi, Simone. I sent you an email, Simone, so let me know. <laughs> yes, and happy Friday to you, too. Hi, Shannon. Yay, it's finally Friday. This was the longest week ever. <laughs> I'm being dramatic, but it was a long week. <laughs> I hope you all had a great day today, um, and I hope you have fun this weekend. I will be doing a lot of chores, but it's okay because I'm doing it now, so I don't have to do it later, so that'll work. <laughs> all right, today's episode is going to be about like nurses, LVNs, LPNs, CNAs, RTs um, that are wanting to become medical coders and what that's all about. This episode was inspired by a comment that I got today and it's been a while since I've done a advice for um, other medical professionals <laughs> uh, to medical coding. I haven't done one in a couple of months. I looked back. And, uh, yeah, it's been a minute, so. All right, so I've got the letter up. Mm. I'm sorry, I'm yawning. <laughs> All right. Um, hi, Aurora. Jada? I'm currently studying medical coding. Hopefully I'll be done in three months and then I'll take the exam. Um, your videos are very informative. Thank you. Hi, Jamie. All right, so I guess we can go ahead and get started. If you are brand new to my channel, welcome. I am Blue, I'm a medical coder. Today's episode is going to be advice to uh, respiratory therapists, nurses, LVNs, RNs, <laughs> CNAs, uh, anybody that's in the medical field that is wanting to transition over into medical coding, this episode is for you. So the reason that I am doing this episode today was it was inspired by a comment that I got earlier. And I'm going to go ahead and read the comment and then we're going to talk about it. So and let us begin. So the viewer says, hi, Blue, new subscriber here. Thank you. Um, you definitely saved me from one of those expensive online programs. Thank you. Anyway, after a lot of research, I believe I want to get the CCS certification, the Certified Coding Specialist, and that is offered with the American Health Information Management Association. Uh, but is the CCS one I can learn independently and be able to sit for the exam without any prior coding experience? I have been an RN for the last six years, but I have never done anything anywhere close to billing or coding. I am also starting on my BSN in a month. It's an online program doing one class at a time every five weeks. I will hopefully be working weekends only by then too. 
So if I have Monday through Friday to focus on learning, do you think it would be reasonable to follow your independent study guide while taking one class at a time for my BSN? Thank you. So I did, so what the viewer is talking about here is I did put out a syllabus, right? It is an independent study sequence syllabus because with any of the medical coding credentials, you can study independently. Um, before, AHIMA used to have a certain requirements in order for you to be able to sit for um, certain certifications, and now they have lifted those requirements. So with that in mind, yes, you can absolutely study independently uh, to take these exams. However, it's going to take more than a wink and a smile in order to be able to get through these uh, certification exams. The thing about this is um, I have never been a nurse. I have never personally been anywhere near nursing. Okay, I have no, my thought process has never been into nursing. However, <laughs> I do know that the curriculum for nursing or this BSN is very rigorous. The thing about learning medical coding is you need to have time to learn it. You cannot be trying to put all these other classes while you're trying to learn medical coding. This is not, medical coding is not something that you can learn on the side. Oh, I'll devote some time to it. I'm only taking one class. My advice to this viewer is this, study your nursing, get your nursing out of the way. Don't try to do nursing and medical coding simultaneously. What's gonna end up happening is medical coding is a completely different animal. And if you're coming from the nursing side, you're obviously gonna have your nurse hat on, right? And nurses think differently when it comes to how they look at documentation. So they have to kind of break that habit. But while you're trying to get your BSN, that's gonna be a little bit difficult because again, you have to think differently. So this is not, again, if you're out there and you're thinking of doing the simultaneous thing because you think maybe medical coding will be easy, Medical coding is not easy. It doesn't matter who you are because I have tutored many nurses, RNs, BSNs, LVNs, LPNs, all of them, CNAs. I have trained all of them and they have all said the same thing to me. Blue, I had no idea that medical coding was this difficult. I didn't have this hard a time when I was in nursing school. So <laughs> that's why I'm telling you guys. If that is what you think or somebody's telling you, oh yeah, it's easy. Nope. I have nothing to sell you, so I have no reason to lie to you, okay? This is the thing. If you are going to do this, you have to devote time to learning it. This, is, again, is not something that you can learn on the side because there's a lot of rules to learning medical coding. And with a credential like the CCS, the CCS is the gold standard of medical coding credentials because this one credential says that you have mastered both the inpatient side of the house and the outpatient side of the house. Both have different sets of rules, okay? With the outpatient side, we can only code what's definitive, and we use evaluation and management leveling, and we use the CPT manual for our procedures, right? On the inpatient side of the house, you're able to pick up things that are probable, suspected, likely, maybe, and that kind of thing, because we have to code what the provider is treating, right, for that patient. But here's the other thing. Not only that, you're not using the CPT manual, you're not using evaluation and management, but you are using the ICD-10 PCS manual. And those codes have to be built. The uh, procedure codes have to be built. So that's a different set of rules. Also, you have to know about MSDRGs. You have to know about your appropriate sequencing. You have to know about all these things. So there's a difference. And yes, sequencing does play a role in both sides, but no more important than on the inpatient side of the house because there's a difference in the revenue when you are sequencing things and they have to be selected appropriately and they have to be sequenced the right way because if not, that facility can lose a lot of money. So that's why I'm saying you have to be able to devote time when you're doing this stuff. Yes, nurses respiratory therapists and LVNs, LPNs are, you know, <laughs> they all have their medical terminology and anatomy down. And that is great because that is half your battle right there. The other side of that coin is this. You 
still have to learn the coding rules. Now, people think that you can sort of bypass a lot of the, um, the coding stuff. Well, um, I got another message from a doctor who is a foreign trained doctor, but couldn't get residency here in the US. But they said that they wanted to go ahead and sit for the CDIP. And if you don't know, that's a clinical documentation improvement practitioner. Everybody knows as of late, I have been talking about that. It's a very hot topic right now. Um, I myself am studying it as well. I have been a veteran medical coder for over 10 years. Now, I'm pretty advanced for, for what I've done in my time. I will tell you that CDI is not a joke. And that is something that takes time to understand. The thing about going from being a doctor to a CDI is this. You're missing part of that puzzle, which is the medical coding part. I don't think that you should be a CDI before you've had any kind of experience doing coding. Because in order to do CDI correctly, you have to be able to communicate with not just the providers, but you gotta be able to uh, uh, communicate with the coders as well. And the coders are gonna be able to tell you what it is that they need. If you've never been a medical coder and you're just trying to slide into that role as a CDI because you, you're a foreign trained doctor and you have all of this doctor knowledge so you can speak doctor, that's great. But at the same time, it's not going to help you because you're going to be lost on that piece with medical coding. So this is why I'm saying you need to be a medical coder first before you try to go into that CDI role. And yes, that's probably not a requirement. But at the same time, I'm telling you guys so that you're set up for success. Now, you, you may not listen to me and you may not care what I think, and that's fine. But I'm telling you as somebody who's been in the field before and who understands, when it comes to CDI, you have to have a background, not just being able to talk to providers, but to be able to understand the coding process. You have to be able to understand what the thought process is when we're looking at these procedure codes and when we're looking at these diagnosis codes. And yes, you're probably able to look at it and see that there's something that's missing. Whereas a coder, if they haven't done their research or they don't understand, may not understand that there's something that's missing. So it's good. But again, you don't have to be a coder forever. Just get some time in so that you can get out there and be able to do CDI like you want to do it. Okay. Again, it's not forever, but just get enough experience so that you can have that understanding. It's like people who try to go from um, school immediately into auditing. <laughs> I've gotten those emails before too. Blue, I want to be an auditor. Okay, great. That's, that's wonderful. So, so what kind of clinics have you coded in? Oh, I've never been a coder before, but I really want to do auditing. How are you supposed to understand what you're doing as an auditor? if you've never been a coder before. If you've never been corrected as a coder, how can you correct somebody else? Because coders are gonna look at their auditors and they're gonna look at those credentials and they're gonna look at your time in, how much time ex and experience do you have? Because they'll question it. I question it. If I get an auditor that's brand new, I'm questioning what does that auditor know, especially when they're trying to ding me on something that's not even legitimate. So again, if you haven't had any experience as a coder, you need that before you start trying to be an auditor or get these other credentials that say that you can do auditing. <laughs> again, that is something that when it comes to career progression, I've talked about career progression before. I probably need to talk about it again. Um, so that way you all understand that it's not just about getting an education on a certain topic and then being able to say, well, I have this certification, I should be able to go out and do this. There are people who have had experience who feel that they can't um, perform in a certain function like CDI, but they've had plenty of, of experience with, with school and things like that. That's okay because they've gone through that process. They've been a coder, they've been an auditor, they've been an educator, and then they're put into that position. Somebody forces them into that position of a CDI. And they're like, okay, you know, that, that makes sense because that career progression makes sense. You know enough, you've been around enough, right, to be able to understand those things. So that makes sense. 
but going clear from the gate and you have no experience into, okay, I'm going to do this. Well, because I'm going to do it because I say so. It, that's not the way that medical coding and the health information field works. In order to be really successful, you need to have experience. And well, Blue, I, I can't get experience. They, they won't hire me. They will hire you. You have to be persistent. You have to put, present yourself in a way that is appropriate, that is appropriate for your level of, of experience and expertise. Now, experience will come, but the expertise part is what you're presenting yourself with. And understanding that part is really very, very important. So I'm going to read some of those comments because I saw a lot of them coming in. <laughs> All right. Happy birthday, Jamie. Um, alive in my 50s. Hi, Blue. Hi. Uh, and everybody's telling Jamie, happy birthday. That's wonderful. Happy birthday to you. Um, Christopher, nobody said it was easy. That is very true. Um, Christina, the codes are built off of various tables. Yes. Hi, Edel. Hi, Norma. Love, love, love. Thank you. <laughs> uh, Guy, Miss Blue, you just had your serious face on. I do hope the nurse who asked you that question will recognize it and take it to heart. I hope so, too, uh, because I sometimes will get the question and they'll ask me, can I do this? Can I do that? And I'll tell them, OK, well, it's actually like this. And then they'll say, well, no, I'm going to do it anyway. OK, well, you asked me. <laughs> so. I mean, I'm just giving you my advice. I mean, I'm that's all I'm doing. So, um, do you offer tutoring? I take my CPC in November. Yes, I do, uh, Norma. I do offer tutoring. Uh, my tutoring cur rate currently is twenty five dollars for the first hour, fifteen for the second hour, and we meet over Zoom. I'm available after six p.m. Central Standard Time uh, during the week, and after ten a.m. on the weekends. Um, I accept PayPal and Zelle. And um, we go over whatever questions that you have. If you have a hard time understanding a certain thing about the CPT or the ENM, then we talk about that. So all you have to do is just let me know. Um, just email me at medicalcodingwithblue at gmail.com. And blue is B-L-E-U. <laughs> and then, you know, we'll uh, set up a time. So if you're interested, that's my information. And I also leave it in the description box of the videos. Uh, all the time. <laughs> so if you guys are interested, anybody, uh, and you need to ring, let me know. Because I currently have a pretty, pretty open schedule right now. I have a few appointments, but not anything that's too drastic. <laughs> um, please save the stream on your channel. We'd love to watch it from the beginning. Um, you can watch it. You can rewatch. Once the show's over, you can rewatch it. And you can go at any time to any of my past lives. Um, live performances and be able to watch them yes uh oh my god i need you asap <laughs> oh my goodness okay so yes uh reach out let me know and we will get that set up so but yes so keeping in mind again if you've been a bedside nurse if you've been a bedside with of course uh respiratory therapy and you want to get out of the hands-on with the patients yes Going over into medical coding is a good transition because you're going to understand. Sometimes it's x-ray techs too. Uh, my boss is a former x-ray tech, so she she knows her anatomy because she's she's been an x-ray tech. So that does help. Having that background does help. But remember, when you are going from being like a CNA, an LVN, RT, or RN, uh, you have to take off that... <laughs> that hat and get on the coding hat because if it's not documented it didn't happen now that may not make sense to you right now but we can't infer anything from the documentation so i have trained nurses that say well the doctor put them on this this or that or whatever this therapy or that therapy that clearly means that they have this and say okay where is it documented and they couldn't answer me they go well you know it's just common sense <laughs> We don't work that way. With medical coding, it has to be literal. Everything has to be like in plain English and it's got to be spelled out. If the doctor is using their doctor speak, that is totally fine because it is our responsibility to translate that appropriately. The doctor does not or the provider, you know, nurse practitioner, uh, PA, they don't have to use a specific language of the book. 
but we have to be able to translate it into what they're saying from what the book says. So that is our responsibility as a medical coder. And they are, they don't have to, like I said, use the same words that is in the book. So it really all depends. And you know, that is, <laughs> that's the, the, the big fundamentals of it. Um, medical coding, getting back to learning it, it takes a lot of attention to detail because if you don't have a good instructor and yes, well, you can learn this on your own. Sometimes you do need a helping hand with like an instructor to kind of explain what does this mean? <laughs> and if you don't have that, it makes it difficult. Uh, you can reach out and find a mentor with the association that you're with. You can try to go on LinkedIn. LinkedIn is a great place to find mentors. Uh, you can hire a tutor. Again, I do tutoring. So uh, if you want to reach out, let me know. Um, there's other tutors available on LinkedIn and you know each one of them has their own different rates. So it's entirely up to you. Sometimes you just need like a session or two to kind of get that stuff straight. And then you can keep moving forward on your own. So it really is um, all up to you, whatever it is that you want to do. Um, it is a worthwhile field. It does help to keep you engaged and it does help you to keep your, <laughs> your medical knowledge up to, up to date too, uh, because there's going to be times when you're going to say, well, I'm, I'm getting to a point where I don't want to do physical hands-on nursing anymore or physical hands-on with the patients. I need to do something else because you know, it's taken a toll on me. It is a lot physically uh, to be handling patients and, and moving them here, moving them there, and then to try to switch over into something else where you're still using that, <laughs> that, that long learned uh, medical knowledge and putting it to good use somewhere else. And medical coding is a really good alternative for that um, because looking at it and having that background in medical will really help you. Alive in my 50 says, I completed my online ICD-10 CM class. It takes about 20 hours of reading chapters and supplemental research, uh, <laughs> blues, coding videos, coding assignments, and stuff. You know, I mean, it all depends on how you want to get your practice. I always recommend like uh, sites like Just Coding, uh, justcoding.com. If you have not heard of it, I'm going to leave it in here, justcoding.com. They have, oh, 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 everybody, look out. We have the amazing Brian Kui who has joined us. Thank you so much, Brian, for joining us. <laughs> Congratulations on your 100th episode. Oh, he's over 100 episodes on his wildly popular uh, Not Elsewhere Classified podcast. So if you haven't had a chance to check that out, he is the only one that I will recommend podcast when it comes to medical coders. He is the only one, the not elsewhere classified podcast. <laughs> um, Norma Blue, thank you. I will email to set up a session. Happy I found you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, Christina says, and you're welcome, Brian. Uh, Christina says, to keep practicing coding, I am going back and redoing um, the exercises in our handbook and training out how to get the codes good. You know, that's that's what you have to do. That's what you have to do. Um, but, um, former doctor here transitioning into medical coding and will put in the work that it takes to become a coder. Thank you for being honest. Oh, you're welcome. And thank you for taking my advice. <laughs> so what was I saying? I was saying something. I lost my train of thought. What was my train of thought? Well, while I am, <laughs> while I am thinking of that, does anybody have any questions? Oh, I was talking about justcoding.com. So with just coding, if you are looking to practice, they have a free subscription and they have a paid subscription. With the free subscription, you have access to free coding quizzes. They are five question coding quizzes, and they will tell you if you're correct at the end of the coding quiz. Um, the thing is, I've, I've heard feedback from people, well, Blue, the coding quizzes was too easy. Here's the thing. They give you multiple choice answers, right, to be able to answer these questions. 
But I always tell people to just look at the question itself and look up the code in the book and see if one of your answers matches um, those answers. Because if you're just looking at the answers and you're looking at the book, then, oh, yeah, okay, cool, that's fine. But if you're trying to not look at the answers and then you are doing the work yourself, it gets you more used to looking up codes in the book. Because I guarantee you those same people that were telling me that um, they were very easy are not able to look those codes up through the index. So you have to be able to look it up in the index if you get stuck. And even when you're in your exam, you have to be able to think, okay, how can I get to this code in the index if you need to do that? Okay, because if you don't, then obviously um, you want to be able to save time. But knowing how to index those codes is going to be very important, especially with CPT. So let's see what else we have. Uh, Christina says, and I had talked to my instructor about additional books to use in other sites. And she told me she has no idea <laughs> of books or other sites. Wow. I'm having issues with just coding. What's, what's the issue with just coding? Uh, Jamie, I had a mentor through AHIMA who would give me actual hospital records. All private identifying info was redacted and it was super hard, but totally worth the practice. That's good. That was nice. Um, career step instructors. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I've heard that more than once. <laughs> setting up my account. I don't know what to tell you, Christina, other than to probably change the browser that you're using. If you're probably going through like Internet Explorer, try going through Chrome and see if that will work. If if Chrome will work or Foxfire or Firefox or whatever it's called, um, changing the, the browser to set it up, maybe that might work. Um, Brian says, I suggest looking at the clinical coding workout. The one by AHA. Is that the one by AHA, Brian? Ahima. Oh, okay. Yeah. And see, those books are really good too. So going to the Ahima website, you can go to the bookstore and it'll, it'll give you the options to um, buy those books. So they have a member price and a non-member price. So keep that in mind. Um... Hannah, is it possible to leave a link for Brian's podcast? Go for it, Brian, if you have the, <laughs> if you have the link um, for your podcast. Yes, Brian is very good. He speaks very candidly, and I enjoy his uh, insights into our health information world. <laughs> Do not use Microsoft Edge. <laughs> I agree. It's on YouTube. For the podcast, the Not Elsewhere Classified podcast, Oh, okay. Cool. All right. What else? I think that was about it. A uh, small crowd tonight. <laughs> um, take your time learning medical coding. Yes, that independent uh, syllabus that's given that I did. Um, it's just giving you like a template of how to study and how long to study. That's just, again, it's just a template. You don't have to study that long or that short. If you need more time, if you need less time, whatever, um, it's just giving you an idea. If you follow it, you can make it through in one year. You can shorten it to nine months. I always recommend that if you are going to study medical coding, at least go nine months. 12 months or 18 months so that way you're not rushing um, I know some people that they go through it rather quickly and when they get out into the real world then they feel really lost don't set yourself up to fail guys always make sure that you take the time to really understand if you don't understand something you have to speak up because nobody understands that you don't understand and it's gonna show when you're taking these um, assessment tests when you get out in the real world they're gonna give you a test just to gauge your knowledge and if you are failing these tests, you're not going to get the call back because they're not going to want to train you. So again, take the opportunity to learn from your mistakes and try to figure a way that you can get better at it. Don't run away from it, whatever you do. 
because the more you run away from the things that you don't understand, um, a lot of people will run away from evaluation and management because they don't get it. I hate it. I hate it. Everybody hates it. Okay, you don't have to hate it. Okay, <laughs> I don't hate it because I've taken the time to actually read the book cover to cover to understand evaluation and management. And it is about, you know, being able to gauge the cognitive work of the provider. Understanding those elements is what is going to help you. So, um, Hannah, can I get a kick in the butt? I haven't been studying. <gasps> Blasphemy. I need to, but I have no motivation right now. Hi, Floor. Brian, real world, it takes a year to learn how to do the job you want to do. That's right. Hannah, you're going to have to get on it because that test time is going to come up really quick. What is it in October you said that you were going to take your test? Um, you had a schedule for October, right? Is that right? Because all that time that you spend in school, <laughs> all that knowledge is going to go right out the window if you don't start studying. Now, you don't have to be like on it five or six hours a day, but you do have to spend some time with it. September 25th, you need to get on it, girlfriend. And that book <laughs> is just sitting there in all of its glory. I know you have it already, which is that, um, that uh, AAPC uh, exam prep guide. So work through that exam prep guide. If you get stuck, you need to let me know. But, you know, you got to work through it and get as much practice in as you can. Because the more you're sitting around waiting, when that uh, September 25th comes up and you're going to be in that room, okay, it's going to be showtime and it's not the time to be like, man, I really should have uh, done a lot more studying. You were doing really good in those <laughs> those tutoring sessions, ma'am. So make sure that you stick with that, okay, because you, you got to get out there. I know you like doing it. We talked about it. You did really well on the exercises. You need to just stick with it and don't let this time, just because you don't have something to do like with the school, don't let that be your reason that you're not studying. So, I have been staring at it. Well, try opening it. <laughs> work through a few pages at a time, you know, just just work through them. Because it's, it's not going to do anything but just be a, an expensive paperweight if you allow it to be. I'm just saying. Christina says, I have a friend who failed the CPC twice and she's giving up for now, but yet... She is working in the field. Hmm. Well, if she is giving up for now, you know, that's a lot of wasted time. You know, if you don't, if you don't take the time to take a break and then come back to it and practice again so that you can pass the exam again, the, the problem is sometimes people won't take it seriously. And they'll think, oh, yeah, I got it. Or they'll be studying from the book, the practice exam book, and they'll, they'll do really well in the practice exam book, and they'll get that false sense of, um, of security and be like, oh, yeah, I can pass it, no big deal. And then they get in there, treat it like it's no big deal, and then they fail. So you have to treat it like it's a big deal, guys, because this test, it will chew you up and spit you out if you don't watch it. You know, you have to take it seriously. And, you know, I understand right now she's probably feeling down because she failed it twice. But she needs to get back in it and buckle down if that's really what she wants to do. Okay, because, yes, while she may be able to work in the field, um, and maybe she got grandfathered in, or maybe the, the facility just allows that, you know, there's potentially other opportunities that she's missing out on because she's not certified. Um... Alive in my 50s, my online instructor for the ICD-10-CM class has scheduled our four-hour test this week to prepare us for the CPC exam. Her score was in the 50s. Oh my goodness. Wow. Isn't she in the fam doesn't she have family practice? Family practice, you still see a lot of stuff. I mean, you still see a lot of different um, different things. You see broken bones, you see sprains, you see coughs, you see, you know, like regular um, yearly checkups. So there's a lot of different things that you can see in family practice. You know, working in family practice, you have to see everything. So that is 
you know, one of those things. But again, you know, it's up to the individual. Nobody can push that individual but themselves. She's not probably thinking about her why. You have to think about your why, folks. If you're not thinking about your why, you know, what are you doing this for? What are you in it for? I talk about what is what is your why. I talk about it all the time. For me, my why changes, right? But I still have my why in front of me because in those times when I feel frustrated, like at work, and there are times when it's just like, you know, well, why do I have to do this and why do I have to do that? And then I think about my why. What is my why? My why is for my providers to see them perform well, I feel is a reflection of what I do for them as their coder. And so that's important to me. Their future as providers in, in other places is important to me because, again, they're taking that knowledge with them that I'm that I've taught them to their next place because I don't know if their coder is going to be well trained or not, or if they're going to have a brand new medical coder, or a coder that's not certified, or a coder that's overseas. You know, I don't know. So I want to keep them prepared. It's important to me. That's my why. So on those times when I feel like I don't want to do this right now, <laughs> that's what I think about, and then I it renews my energy. Same thing that you got to do if you're a student or if you're out there looking for your first job, same thing that you got to do. You got to really dig in and look at those things. So uh, you can't let that, you know, get you down. There's people who are really smart who had to take the, the exam several times because they get so nervous uh, with taking exams. So, you know, maybe that was her deal because um, I don't know what, uh, kind of program she went in but uh for the score to be like that you know that you have to look at okay how is she being trained and is she doing a lot of exercises on her own so at least that's my advice anyway but um if nobody has anything else she went oh my goodness well then she was really learning on her own um yeah so, but other than that, excuse me, um, if anybody else has any questions, yes, no, maybe so. No. All right. I'm going to go ahead and wrap this one up. I'm going to see y'all again, um, on Monday and I will see y'all again soon. Please like subscribe, share if this helped you and I'll see y'all again. Bye.